Hey guys, welcome back to some more Shantae. Let's get out of the Scuttle Town area and make our way to our next destination. Still at night. This is a really long night, if you ask me. Dance the whole night away, we're still at night. What is coughing doing in this game? Yeah, what the? Ah, uh, well, that's the problem. I don't have any Pokeballs. I should buy some, but <laughs> there's no Pokeballs at that store. Just a bunch of vanish cream. I love how you're just running past everything. Yeah, what? There's no point in fighting things, because the thing is in Shantae, you fight enemies for money. I have max money because I dance the night away, so I don't care. <laughs> what I do care about, though, is another collectible that we're going to be seeing here and there that are night exclusive fireflies. There are 12 of them in the game in total, so we'll be grabbing them all. But as I just mentioned, the problem with this collectible is that they're only in the night. And there's no easy way right now to make the game nighttime, so you have to kind of wait things out to get fireflies. So, honestly, if you're going to get these items, I recommend just getting them along the way if you know where they're at. But if you don't, wait until near the end of the game if you want them all, because it'll be much easier after we get through, like, about halfway through the game. Oh, can't go that way. Oh, I guess we can. Never mind. Are you sure about that? Just a little slip. He's fine. So, I was not supposed to get that hard holder right now. That actually you're not supposed to get until after dungeon number three. And there's four dungeons, by the way. So, that's near the end of the game. So, the slopes in this game, you have like a frame that jump off of them again. If you can do that, you can just climb straight up and get a hard holder early. Thank you. I see you didn't take the save. I don't really need it right now. In fact, actually, with how I'm playing the game, because I have save states that are actually my proper saves in between recordings in case something screws up, I can take advantage of not saving all the time in this game, because when you die in this game, you still have all your progress saved, thankfully. It's not a game where if you die, you're reloaded from your last save with progress included. But you will be taken back to your last save point location-wise. So you can use that to your advantage and just save at one point Make progress on the other side of the map, die until you get a game over, because this game does have a life system, which thankfully does not come back after this game. Didn't really work out. Get a game over, and you can go back to your previous save point, saving you on travel time. I wish more games did that. Yeah, because honestly, <laughs> Metroid would really benefit from that. They didn't change that until Metroid Prime 3, where you actually had a proper checkpoint system. Because when you died, you're sent back to your last save. Progress included. Pretty rough back in the early days. And... Oh, at least, you know, at least they realized their folly and they completely changed that. Maybe not for the remaster of Metroid Prime 1, but, uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, Prime 1 remaster was really just, like, some control tweaks and then a graphic overhaul, and that's about it. It's still the core GameCube game in art, which includes all of its faults. Man, you get around fast, dude. I got here pretty fast, and you're still here already set up shop and everything. Wait, what, what do you mean? I've always been here. Wait, didn't I just talk to you in the forest and also back in Scuttletown? Oh, those are my cousins. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Identical cousins. It's like the whole Officer Jenny, Nurse Joy thing again. It pretty much is, because you see that save man everywhere <laughs> in this world. It's like, wait a minute. There's no way you get around that fast. Oh no! <laughs> I can't see what this is. I need twelve, twelve fireflies to light this up. Just install a light bulb. You, you know, like, like no, that doesn't work in this age. And I understand because we're still inventing electricity. That's why we need to get the steam machine back. But have you guys never heard of fire and a stick? Yeah. <laughs> Just make a lantern. How, how's everything else lit up at this point? Good question. There's only 12 fireflies in, in the world. How's everything else lit up? Again, good question. That sun be really powerful, even at night, apparently. <laughs> or the moon. <laughs> One of the two. So I'm buying a whole bunch of items here, but this shop is the only one in the game that actually has upgrades for Shantae. So you have Boot and Sash here. These are two upgrades we can buy right now. The other two, uh, later. Because they're uh, a little, little expensive. 
Cuff is 500 gems, and Tiara is 900. <laughs> Reminder, our max carrying capacity is 999. Gotta go to uh, grind out some more, huh? Yeah, you're gonna need to come here three times at least to get all Shantae's upgrades. Because those specific item pieces, they actually give us more moves for Shantae. So, the two we bought are actually kick-related moves, so we can do a flip in the air now, and we can also drill kick out of it. They work interchangeably with each other, so it's good to buy them both at the same time. He looks so happy about it. <laughs> Hi, Bolo. <laughs> you idiot. In this game, you're not really that stupid yet. We'll change that by Pirate's Curse. This guy is the comical relief character of Shantae. In this one, he's a little more tame. The biggest personality he has is that he can't stop drooling over risky boots. He, you know, he's just into women. My guy isn't at this age, apparently. But that's pretty much his only character quirk. Later on in the series, he becomes that, but also not smart in the slightest. So he becomes dumber. He becomes a Kelso. Yeah, pretty much. He's the Kelso of Shantae. <laughs> that character trope. <laughs> Look, man, someone had to fill the idiot role in Sequin Land. It'll be me. No one normally volunteers for that, but sure. You, you can take it. Shantae is like, she's not the smartest, but she also is pretty competent on her own. The biggest problem to Shantae is she's just gullible. But Bolo! <laughs> Bolo is gullible and stupid. And that's a trait to have when you really think about it. Yeah, that, that, that's two. That's two things you don't want mixing. Yeah. <laughs> gullible and stupid. So what's your traits? I'm gullible and stupid. Okay then. Lily, one of my favorite things actually comes out of that is somehow he lands a job of like a, a scientist in Pirate's Curse, and he helps develop something. And then it turns out the thing he helps develop with is defective and blows up on the guy, which also turns out to be our villain. So sometimes his stupidity can help us in weird ways. Can't tell at this point, this series is very lighthearted and goofy, so it doesn't really take itself seriously at all. Now you can go in your dungeon. Wait, how'd you get in here? I had to use someone's wrecking ball to get in. Back door? Oh. <laughs> I guess I should've looked around. Dang dingus. Oh, that's Bolo. <laughs> <laughs> He's outside. He's not in here. You know, you would say that too, but he still wouldn't understand what you mean. But that's later Bolo. This one might actually get insulted. Eh, maybe. So, I'm curious, do you recognize this place, Matt? Because you might. Is this the first uh, dungeon of Pirate's Curse? No, but it is featured in Pirate's Curse, actually, as an easter egg. I recognize the layout. Yeah, there is... it was in the sewer section. If you can get up above, like, there was this hidden, like, compartment in a wall you can just, like, claw, like crawl inside of. If you do that, then you're led into... The first dungeon of Shantae, just remade in Pirates vs. Engine. And it's way more playable in that game because the camera's zoomed out by a lot. Don't have this awful screen crunch. Yeah, that's the, the big thing that makes this game difficult a lot of times. It's just the screen crunch. This just looks like a Metroid dungeon. Yeah. It, it kind of is in a lot of ways because when we get ourselves our ability, it's not an item, so it, it's kind of like a power-up system from a Metroid game. But then it also has that same effect as a Zelda game, when now you get the item of the dungeon, you can do more and get to the boss. Huh. But there's challenge here, let me cheese it. So I really hope you're watching these Shantae videos in 60 frames, because this game has a lot of flickering sprites. Or in the case of this one, a vibrating sprite. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm gosh. seeing it right now. Cost. It feels like I have to wear 3D glasses. It really does, yeah. So, at this time period, I understand why they did this. There's only so much they can do to portray a different effect graphically, but 
Yeah, the, the float muffin one is probably the one that just looks the weirdest. Vibrating Shantae. Oh yeah, that's how she survives pits. You couldn't just like put like a cloud under her or something? Modern age, that's what we would do. You know, Mario got a cloud power up in Mario Galaxy 2. Why 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 couldn't Shantae have gotten it? Yeah, that was also on the Wii and then this is like a Game Boy. I know. Technology, that's why. Oh yes, hard puzzle to solve. Memorize squid, squid, squid. Let me get my notepad for that one. <laughs> Did you not get that thing that you were trying to jump at earlier? Yeah, I actually despawned it. Because with the screen crunch in this game, if anything's off screen, it will despawn. It was just some gems, if I'm not mistaken. That are hard, so it's not a big deal. But this dungeon, it does have the introduction of our collectibles here, the warp squids. There's actually five in every dungeon. We need four to bring back to a town to give back to the warp squid hut. So we'll be able to get four of the five here now. Every dungeon outside of the last one, you're gonna need to come back with a later power to get the remaining squid that you can't get, because you can always get four in your first visit, but there's a fifth one that's just out of reach. Also, that's the beginner's trap room. Hold down the B button. It's a run button. You're welcome. If you don't run past all that, you fall. Oh, it's the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES thing, where, you know, you go over the gap, it's just... Can't jump because your head hit bang bang wall, but no, you just walk over, you're fine. Yep, pretty much. Just like in Kirby too. Kirby has the same thing. R really? R really? Gee, I wonder if there's a challenge in here. I'm just not R gonna really? do the challenge of jumping over these fireballs. <laughs> hmm, squid fish fish squid. Hmm, challenge. Two icons. Squid, fish, fish, squid. Darn great puzzle skills right there. You get it the first time, misses it, then have to do it again, still misses it. Great puzzle skills. To be fair, aiming the hair whip. I'm trying to be careful because it is possible to hit two of those blocks at the same time, screwing up your puzzle. Dive kick. <laughs> that hitbox said no. <laughs> yeah, th these guys are kind of hard to fight. The, the wet man are just, like, very aggressive, but they have, like, the Excuse best Excuse me, angle. they were called what? That's that's what they're called. <laughs> yeah, they're called wet man. <laughs> you know the female one we fought earlier? That's called wet gal. <laughs> Not much better. <laughs> Excuse me, that doesn't sound very nice. Hey, that's what he's called. He likes being called that, I think. I, I knew there was a reason we were holding off on this LP. Oh, it has moments, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I can't wait until we get to, like, half GD Hero, which is some of the questionable things they put in, like, the later DLCs released. Because a lot of those later DLCs, they're, they're throwaway stories, they have nothing to do with main plot, but they have some of the goofiest lines. It misses its mommy. Yeah, uh, can you break that down for me? Oh, okay, let's take out a posse. It misses it is mommy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Grammatical errors in my early game? Oh, who would have thought? That happened all the time in like 8-bit, 16-bit games. I'm not surprised to see it here, too. It's, it misses it is mommy. What is that one famous one? Something about happy end or something like that? Yeah, this game is happy end. Oh, this game is happy end. Yeah. I feel asleep. I feel asleep. Well, of course, that one. Congratulations. What was that one from Friday the 13th on NES? It said, you and your friends are dead. Game over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least that one's like right to the point. That was a nice way of putting it, wasn't it? Yeah. Hello, wet man. Bye, wet man. At least they, they got it grammatically correct with a key instead of an key. <laughs> yeah. You found an key. Ah, <laughs> uh, when the squiggly line doesn't appear in Microsoft Word. That would have been interesting.
need my gems. I have to go back to work after this. What is that? Squid? Snail? Squid? That's more like snail, squid, snail. But this one, yeah, remember that for a while or write it down because we actually have to take this block and move it all the way back to the beginning portion of this room. So we gotta take this, there's like a hidden passageway here from the ceiling. And it's gonna take a bit, so this one's easy to forget. <laughs> Come on, Pokey, go faster. <laughs> yeah. No easy way to really speed this up. You can get two hits if you're close enough to it. That's about it. In this game, this was before they introduced the conditioner and the shampoo for Shantae as items, so you can't power up your hair whip, which is your main form of attacking every game. So what you see here is what you got. I love how that that's her upgrades for her weapons. It's just, I'm gonna put more conditioner and shampoo in my hair to make it more <laughs> slick and quick. Yep. It makes a lot of sense. I think there's even a joke in one of the games, too, where they say, like, what would happen? No, I think it's even this game. I think it's a character that says, I would love to see how you would look in short hair, because they know that's Shantae's power. Take away her hair, and she becomes weak. Let's just forget about those transformations, mind you, but no. <laughs> Take away her hair. That's her one true weakness. You gotta give her credit, though. She's attacking things with a head bop all the time. That's gotta give you some nasty whiplash. But also, she's got to have some really strong hair. Yeah, because hair follicle follicles are just like nothing. Yeah, they're they're very weak by nature because they're thin. They don't cause lash la lacerations. Uh oh, did you get a power up? Yeah, so we're learning our first transformation dance. In every dungeon, there is a genie girl to save. And when we save her, then they teach us a dance. In this case, she taught us how to transform into a monkey. All we gotta do is just put in those commands that she said by pressing select and then just pressing the commands at will. And now we're monkey. Return to monkey. I like this form better. <laughs> Honestly, this is probably the best transformation form in this game of the four. Well, five, because we're playing GBA. We get an extra one. And it's because of just how mobile it is. It's very fast. You can get through very small crevices. So you don't have to worry about crawling anymore. You can climb up walls. It's very versatile, if you want to be honest. The one you'll see me use probably the most. Reject humanity. Return to monkey. <laughs> yeah. We have a simple dance. <laughs> That's kind of cool, though. Well, I mean, Shantae's not, like... I mean, she's only half-human. So she's not really projecting that much humanity to return to Monkey. Yeah, because she can transform into multiple different things, so for her, it's like, what's humanity? I'll just become whatever animal of the week it is. Ah, so she's like Beast Boy. In a lot of ways, yeah. You gotta make the comparison. The only thing is about this game specifically, this was the first one to do the transformation thing, and every time you want to transform or use any of the dances, you gotta put in this long string of the commands. Thankfully, the monkey's simple enough. It's just two different inputs. But there'll be later dances, like the warp dances we'll get. That feel like a fighting game combo. So, I'm glad, going forward, they do simplify dances a lot in the series, to a point where you don't have to do a rhythm game, essentially, while putting in combos to get to your next transformation. In later games, it's just like, hold the button in, and then like, press it in a certain direction, and you transform. Yeah, or just like, you bring up a wheel. Yeah. Or even in the case like the latest game, Seven Sirens, you just have your transformations mapped to a button now, so every button will have a different action, making it even more simple. At that point, the transformations will just glorify power-ups. Lester. Uh, let's be honest, are you a me, a me brawler main because of Shantae's outfit from for Smash? I mean, I've had more meme ones than just that one. <laughs> but I have played, like, I think of all the costumes, I think Shantae is one of the ones I use the most, because around the time that costume actually did come out, uh, the lead designer of the character, Matt Bozon, he made a me fighter for that and just posted it on Smash Ultimate's like community page, so I have the one he made, which is very faithful.
Yeah. If you follow that guy's Twitter, like any game that has a character creator, he's always trying to recreate Shantae in it. It's always really cool to see. Well, that was easy. No dribble stone for you. No one gets it. Just giant squid man. Giant jellyfish looking thing. Yeah, very. it's more like a big old jellyfish. Weak points is I, which is a little hard to hit because if it's not fully centered in the screen, not a hitbox. No, oh, I didn't know it was its eye. I thought it was its tentacles. I mean, that would probably hurt too. Shantae just yank him down. <laughs> that would hurt. I mean, I guess in Metroid Prime 3, you kind of do that with the Metroid Hatchers, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that was easy. Pro tip at this phase, you can transform the monkey and climb these walls. Yes, these are walls. <laughs> Mid-air. Did not think that in my first playthrough, because that doesn't look like a wall. It just looks like the seams of the screen. That's it. Shantae's literally breaking the fourth wall doing that. Because there should be just air there. Yeah, I mean, that's why there's monkey statues here. It's kind of your hint to say you can climb these walls, but I just think they're walls. You're not really conveying it all that well besides statues. That's our first boss and our first stone. Think of these kind of like the big collectibles in the Zelda game, like spiritual stones or medallions. We need them all. You can get it now, Shantae. It's safe. You know, with that, that flickering effect, it looked like it was just so melting. Congratulations, Shantae. You got one of the four soaps. This one's minty flavored. Don't actually eat it. I guess you could call it a squeaky clean victory.